from the point of view of our office, the Pontifical Council for Justice and Peace has got this task of uh, promoting, you know, the church's social doctrine and teaching and all of that. I think I think the best, uh, the first thing I probably say is that we have this treasure of principles that can guide action and activities, and it would be great if we knew them, if we got familiar with these principles. You know, a, you know, people can act in several ways, you know, or do anything, but. It's important if whatever we do is guided by some laid out principles, especially if these principles are time proven, proven to be true, dependable, and solid. So uh, that that would you know that facilitates everything that we do because we know we cannot easily go wrong. Therefore, the first thing I will request, if it were possible, is that we find a way of uh, familiarizing the young people or the churches, you know, uh, teaching. Okay, about, about events in society. And when we say this in the United States, I know that some of the, in some areas that I've you know, had a chance to interact with, there's sometimes the, the, the feeling that anything social is socialist. Mm -hmm. Okay? And that is, not, that is not exact. That is not true. Everything social is not socialist. And because when you say social, then you're thinking about you know, the socialist ideology that's going to a communist and east and and, and that, you know, that's not, there's not, there's not much opening in this society for anything socialist. So the social in the church's social doctrine does not refer to a socialist ideology. It refers to the basic character of the human person as a social being. We live in society in relationship and all of that. That's where the social is coming from. So in that sense, the social doctrine of the church, you know, uh, has this as a point of departure. That recognizing what the social person is, living in society, we bound a network of relationships of different types of, you know, whatever. The, 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 the important thing is to recognize this and then see if the basic principles, okay, underlying in this. Mm -hmm. And the basic principles that, for example, the fact that created by God, all of us have an inner, as it were, a great dignity before that nobody can take it from anybody. Because every creature of God has got dignity that can't derive from God Himself. So the basic humans, the sense of human dignity is basic. And from this sense of human dignity flows their rights and the obligations and duties and all of that. You know, uh, the right to work, right to descend, the accommodation, right to live in. Life, even, you so you talked about young people, even right to parental care. Mm. When that is the case, then it's not even parents cannot just abandon their kids and then, and then take off from them. The kids have a right to a parental care and be brought a proper right to education and everything. But all of that, all of this is basically because of the dignity that is inherent in them. That one may not take away and what one cannot compromise on. So that's, that's, that's where we start. Okay, and starting from this, we begin to develop it in all the other areas that we, that, now, that, 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 that we go into. And this will be the first thing, therefore, that I would wish, you know, uh, young people growing up, you know, we have this treasure. In the different travels I do, going different places, I hear people take up, talk about the church has a, you know, has, a, has, a, has a treasure which is kept hidden. And that treasure is basically this, the social teaching of the church. Okay, it's, it's a teaching based on scripture, based on anthropology, who the human person is, and then based on, you know, uh, experience of how the church has lived in the past. The Acts of the Apostles tells us that the early believers lived together. They shared a lot of things they had, took care of the needs of one another. That's already the beginning point. Okay, and from there, over, the, over, over time, the nuns came and developed hospitals. It wasn't for, it wasn't for, you know, it wasn't for any gain. It, was, it wasn't to make a living out of it, but it was because they wanted to help. So it was being true to this, uh, to this, manifestation expression of the Christian faith which uh, you know which derived from scripture. So faith really leads to charity. And charity because of our living together in the community. So that's that would that be the first thing that I like to suggest. You know, let's get familiar with some of these things to guide, you know, our own engagement and activities in society.